So something that seems to be uh, hard to understand for a lot of people is how a physically smaller lobe, cam lobe, can be larger lift in duration than a big lobe. Uh, I see it all the time in the comments and I see people trying to explain it to other people. And it's like, how can you regrind a cam to bigger lift and duration? I don't understand. And we've, we've talked about it some in other videos, but what I have done is I have uh, done an animation with a cam lobe and some lifters and some valves and w w through the animation, I hope we're going to be able to help you physically understand how a smaller load can be bigger than a big load. Because um, the problem is, is people are missing uh, lifter motion versus just the size of a load. The size of a load is irrelevant. Uh, motion is what's relevant to lift and duration. So hang loose and we're going to get into it. All right, so uh, I ain't going to dilly-dally with a bunch of nonsense. I'm going to just get into it. Um, let me get this pulled up and get the screen recorder going. All right, so... Here we have, so this low, this blue load is obviously way larger than this red load. Both lobes are on the same center line. Uh, what the red load is, <laughs> the motion that it delivers is substantially larger than the motion the blue load delivers. So we have two valves. Uh, obviously, all the colors represent one another. So the red lobe is the red valve. The blue lobe is the blue valve. And as we go around, uh, you will be able to see how much different the, uh, the motion that each one delivers actually is. So if we start going in a clockwise rotation, so when we get to roughly yeah, so like 81 degrees so at 81 degrees the red lobe starts moving the valve. Alright, so right here we're already moving the valve with the red load. Uh, as you can see, and you'll be able to see it here. So you can see the two lifters stacked on top of one another. So you can really see what's, you know, you can see the red lifter move inside of the blue lifter before the blue lifter ever starts moving. So as we come, so, all right, so right there, the blue started moving. So we went from, we went from 80, what did I say? 81 to 31. So that's 50 degrees of rotation just on the opening side, right? Before the blue lifter starts moving. So then we continue around and you can see the rate of change, right? So the, the rate that lift is increasing is so much faster because we got the same 360 degrees. So in that same 360 degrees for both lobes, the red lobe is moving the valve probably double the area, maybe even double and a half the area. So we get up to peak lift and then you can see how much further open the the red valve is versus the blue valve. And then we're going to cut and we're going to come back down. So here we go down the closing side. All right. So right. So roughly 
yeah, like 261, 261 degrees, the red, the blue valve is, is closed. It's done. And the, and the red valve has still got a ways to go. Now it, now it's closed. So, I mean, this is, again, you know, people keep focusing on the size of the lobe, but the size of the lobe is irrelevant. What matters is what what the the motion that that lobe design will create. Uh, I'm gonna just let it run around a couple of times so you can feel you know visually see the motion as it's happening. Um, and, and I hope that it makes sense. So I'm going to stop it at TDC or relative TDC. So both of these lobes I designed this week, these are actual lobe designs. So this blue lobe is uh, 218 at 50 and 330 lobe lift. This red lobe is 280 at 50 and 500 lobe lift. So the red lobe is lifting the lifter 150 more thousands and it's lifting the valve about 300 more thousands than the blue lobe is. Um, the red lobe does have lash in it so that if I took the lash out, you know, it would be even bigger and it does have a bigger lifter wheel also. So all of that plays into you know, like, you know, there's been all kind of crazy debate about lifter size and all that stuff. So here's the deal. So as this, as you see right here, as you see, the lifter is making contact. So if we come around to an angle, right? So as this wheel gets larger, this red wheel, as it gets larger, then it's going to be further up the lobe at the same lobe angle. So if the wheel gets larger, then you will open the valve sooner and close it later, right? So you'll add duration with a larger wheel. Um, but larger wheel, you know, offers a larger bearing and a slower, you know, the larger the wheel gets, the slower the surface footage of the wheel itself so all of that's a positive so if you can run a larger wheel you know that's great because like uh you know the globe will be ground for whatever size wheel you intend to put on it that way the duration comes out right you know so if you grind a load the same load for a 750 wheel or uh, uh 810 wheel then obviously the lobe shape is different to accommodate for the larger wheel. So having said all that, but then, you know, again, and we can do this same animation with a flat tappet and you can say, and we may do that for giggles. Um, yeah, hang loose. And I'm going to see if I can set this up for a flat tappet and then we can see that too. All right, so I got the animation set up, and I, I got it blew up where you can really see it. And what I've done is I just put two lobes uh, opposed to one another, and I did a big lifter and a small lifter, a lifter that's bigger than the lobe requires and a lifter that's smaller than the lobe requires. And I got it blew up, and you can really see it good. So this will uh, drive home again. Uh, flat tappets and lifter diameter and what's happening with the uh, the count the the uh, the counteraction between the lifter and the lobe itself so how it's using the face of, of the whole lifter and again this wasn't supposed to be a flat tappet video but it just the animation's really cool and you can really see it because i got it blew up really good and some people on the the last when we had all that crazy, stupid debate about lifter size stuff, some people said they couldn't see it good in the cam doctor. So this animation is just like, it's, it's really neat, this animation stuff. So let me, uh, 
Well, let me get the screen recorder going. Okay, so again, I got it blew up really big. Red is a small lifter, blue is a big lifter. And the lobes are on the cam uh, 360 crank degrees apart, which would be 180 cam degrees apart. So <clears throat> as we rotate around, so watch how we go from, <clears throat> if you look in the center right here, watch how we go from using the center of the lifter to all the way out to the edge of the lifter as we go. So you can see as a flat tappet sweeps through its cycle it's changing the location of the lifter that it's using and this is why lifter diameter is so important on flat tappet so now we back to center so we went all the way from you know 80 percent of that lifter diameter all the way back to zero and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side now Conversely, this the, the exhaust lobe, we got a lifter that's too small. So we're on the center of the lifter and we start coming up and you see already early, we are just about out of room already. And I think this design requires like a 985 diameter lifter. And I've got the lifter diameter set at like 850, I think it is. So it's, it's, it's about the size of a small block Chevrolet and these lobes are actually for uh, a supercharged Volkswagen. So the Volkswagen uses a mushroom type lifter. It's got a 20, 28 millimeter head, I think. So it's really, really big. So as we come, so right there, it, it's done. It's already used up all the lifter diameter. And then as we continue, you're going to see the lobe is digging into the edge of the lifter. So, you know, we, we are just on the edge of the lifter all the way. And now we just come off the edge and then we'll sweep across. And so right there, we're on the edge again and we just come off. So that's how you can murder a cam with too small a lifter. And again, see, this is going to change what the degree wheel say is because now you're not using the flat action you know you, you you're you're on the edge of the lifter so it's not seeing the whole camshaft so that's how you get goofy readings with the wrong lifter on, on the camshaft so one more time with the with the correct size and you can see how beautiful that works you and she just sweeps right across and it's just pretty as it can be. And then murder, we murder in lobes. And then we murder in lobes again. And again, this is why, you know, like in some other videos, I talked about lifter chamfer. So if you've got, like on the edge of the lifter, if you've got a humongous chamfer, you're consuming usable diameter. So again, if the lobe design is really close to your lifter diameter, the, the the velocity requirement is close to your lifter diameter. You have to be careful about how much chamfer. I mean, I have seen some lobes that have, I mean, not lobes, lifters that have like really, really, really excessive uh, little chamfers. And, and I've seen videos where people's talking about, oh yeah, we always chamfer our lifters. And, and cause you know, if you don't, it'll tear up the lobe. And you know, again, this is why that is utter nonsense because whether you chamfer that lifter or not, it's never close. If it's like it's supposed to be, it's never close to that load, right? That whether that's chamfered or not is never going to make any difference. And it's got, not going to make any difference in the block either because the lifter is never up in this area of the lifter is never in the lifter bolt. It's just hanging out there in the air. So, you know, when people tell you you need to chamfer the edge of your lifter, that just proves that they don't understand how the valve train works. So, uh, having said that, I'm going to quit there. Hopefully that made sense. And if we can put all of that uh, 
stuff to bed with um, lobe size and you know and I just I just that was a bonus the flat tappet stuff I read that mean to do any flat tappet deal that was in the in, in my idea but uh, but again while we had the animation up I thought it would be uh, educational to just show that so it would help make more sense because again I know we got a lot of new subscribers that may haven't seen all of those older videos about flat tappet stuff and this will just you know help educate the community because again that's the goal of this channel is just to pass along this information because uh, when I was coming up nobody would pass anything along to me so hopefully that helps have a great day thank you so much check out the website if you need anything powermachineinc.com we will see you on the next one